If you can't afford an Audi S3, or more importantly, the insurance for an Audi S3, then I think this is the perfect compromise. This is the Audi A3 2.0-litre Quattro. That's right, this is a very rare Quattro-powered Audi A3. What makes it so special though? Let me explain. My name's Tom, and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. Right, the Audi A3 Quattro, or the Audi S3 Lite, as I like to call it. It has a similar EA888 2.0-litre turbo engine as the Audi S3. The main difference, though, is that it has a smaller turbo and some slightly less strong internal parts. But don't you worry, this is still a mighty engine. In terms of power, this A3 puts out 190 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque. But with a simple software update, you can easily remap this thing to have it put out 250 horsepower and a whopping 400 newton meters of torque. Definitely a worthy upgrade if you ask me. But anyway, let's see how a stock one handles the 30 to 70 Sprint. We managed 6.16 seconds, which on the face of it doesn't seem hugely fast, but looking closer, you'll notice it's right around cars with significantly more power, like the 286 horsepower Audi Q750 TDI and the 245 horsepower Mercedes E300 Coupe. And remember, a 300 pound remap will have you flying past those cars. Plus, with the addition of Quattro, you're never going to be limited with grip. So the world is your oyster with this thing, really. Now onto the next subject, the interior. For me, this Audi 8 V Audi A3 is the best A3 Audi ever made. I know there's a new one, but if you've ever had a look round one, you'll know that this one is just a cut above in terms of quality. The leather feels softer, the soft touch materials move all the way to the back, and everything just feels remarkably solid. I'm not 100% sure why this is the case, but my best guess is that Dieselgate meant Audi had to cut corners somewhere, and quality was unfortunately one of them. Anyway, the rear, this is where the newer car is better, as the older generation car is lacking in legroom just a tad. I mean, I can fit back here, but I'm not exactly living the life of Riley. Then there's just the lack of anything like cup holders and an armrest. You do get climate vents, but it's still an Audi at the end of the day. I'd really like an armrest as standard. The boot though is fantastic. It has shopping hooks, a 12 volt socket, little grabbers that keep the boot floor up and handles to fold the rear seats down. Plus, do you know what else is good? They don't get stuck on the way down. Lovely stuff, Audi. If only more cars could do that. Anyway, I suppose we uh, better get on the road. Let's get cracking. Oh, back in another Audi A3, and this is a pretty nice one, I must say. The only options we're actually missing are a reverse camera and mag ride. Can you believe it? It's got every single other option. And do you know what? The best thing about this car is still the 2.0-litre EA888 engine and this wet clutch, dual clutch gearbox. It responds well, the engine pulls hard, and it's a very, very comfortable car to drive around town. Going over speed bumps, just on the standard dampers, it's absolutely brilliant. Much better than the uh, F21 series, BMW 1 series. Better than pretty much everything else in this class, in all honesty. It's comfortable, you've got a very comfy seat as well. You can adjust the pitch of the base. You've got a little extendable bit for your thighs. And just generally, yeah, the seat is quite nice. If you're a larger chap like I am, then it's just comfortable. It doesn't hold you in so much, but it doesn't really need to. The main thing though, really is just the way this thing drives. It is unbelievably smooth. So much better than the 1.5 litre engine with a dry clutch box. It's smoother, it responds quicker. It's just, yeah, it's just better. <laughs> then in terms of parking the Audi A3, uh, it's pretty easy, I would say. It's a pretty boxy shape out of all hatchbacks. Is it the easiest? I do, do you know what? I'd say it is actually. 
Wing mirrors are nice and large. Of course, you've got this little toggle down here so you can adjust them, see where the lines are. And one thing that's really good about those, actually, is that they're quite wide, so you can actually see quite a lot of stuff that would otherwise be in your blind spot. Parking sensors are nice and accurate. And do you need a reverse camera? Mm, not necessarily. The only thing I will say is if there's like a bollard behind you and it's night time, sometimes these parking sensors don't pick them up until you're quite close, which, you know, can make accidents happen sometimes. <laughs> But overall, it's uh, yeah, still pretty good. Getting out of the car as well, you can always get to the first notch. I've never had any problems uh, parking this thing around London. But oh, let's just drive because steering is nice and light. Obviously, you don't get quite as fast a rack as in the Audi S3, but the steering itself is still dynamic. So it kind of like speeds up the slower you go and becomes less responsive the faster you go. It's hard to describe, but basically it works. Coming out of junction, we got that Quattro, Haldex based Quattro all wheel drive. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that, does it? And one thing I will mention actually, is this is smoother than an Audi S3. Because in the S3, you, obviously you have a bigger turbo, which means you get a little bit more turbo lag. It's still a very good engine, but you notice that the, the real torque, the real meat of the engine, doesn't really come in until 2,000 revs, even though it says it comes in at 1,800 revs. My god, I really need to get some better sticky stuff. Whereas this, you get that 320 newton meters of torque coming in at 1,500 RPM. And it actually feels like it comes in sooner than that. It comes in really strong. And even though it's less torque than this, it's only 80 newton meters less. And when you're driving a car that's fundamentally pretty light, it feels pretty quick, you know, any anything that does 0 to 60 in under 7 seconds is a quick car in my mind. People get very obsessed with cars doing 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds. If you've ever driven a car that does 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, you'll know that you really do not need that kind of performance in an everyday automobile. Anything that does under 7 is perfectly good enough. Anyway, we are going to test the miles per gallon figure today see what we can get on the combined cycle. So we're going to do a little handling test round a roundabout, then get ourselves on the motorway and see if we can match Audi's claimed figure of 47.9 miles per gallon. Now that is quite high, all things considered. You know, the 1.5 litre engine sometimes struggles to get that. But because this engine isn't having to work as hard as that 1.5 litre engine, it's more relaxed, it's using less fuel, and yeah, it should do a pretty good figure, I think. Anyway, let's get to the roundabout now, get the traction control off, and see how this thing handles. Alrighty then, let's use our favourites button to get us into dynamic. This will sharpen up the steering, put the gearbox in S mode so we get shorter, sharper shifts and increase throttle response. It will also hold on to gears for longer so we're sort of in the power band a bit more. Let's also get the traction off. And one th other thing I didn't mention is that favourites button. You can't change drive mode in newer A3s with that now. Pretty crappy, I know. But anyway, get your foot down, come around a corner. And do you need more performance than this? I don't think you do, really, in all honesty. Response is good, engine feels strong, and if you do want more performance, remember, this is a EA888 engine, which means you can remap it and it'll still be fairly reliable. It's one of those things, it's just, just indestructible, this engine, really is that good. Steering weights up nicely, and in terms of handling, you have to be going quite quick to get the back end loose, but it is fairly hot hatch-esque. Remember, this is effectively the same chassis as an Audi S3, right? It's just the suspension is very slightly different, but it's still a S-line car, which means you still get the S-line suspension. So it should handle pretty well. We'll see later on. For now though, let's get ourselves into Eco using our favorites button. Why did Audi get rid of that in the newer cars? Well, they didn't get rid of it. It's just you can't change drive mode with it, which is like kind of the main thing you'd want. 
but yeah, let's get ourselves in efficiency, get ourselves onto the motorway and see what it's like on the motorway and see if we can get 47.9 mpg out of this thing. Uh, coming onto the motorway, let's give it half throttle. Even though this is in eco mode, it'll still give you a bit of boost if you give it enough throttle. And just look at that. That's literally half throttle. And you get up to 70 so easily. Honestly, just such a fantastic engine for this car. And then once you're on the motorway, this being a high spec car, means we have adaptive cruise as well. So, wacky cruise control on 70 miles an hour and basically let the car drive itself. All very relaxing. There is almost zero road noise, very little wind noise. It's just overall a brilliant car for long motorway journeys. It's amazing really how quiet they made this little hatchback inside. Genuinely, this is as quiet as something like a new BMW 3 Series or a Mercedes C-Class. It's that good. The other thing I like as well, is this adaptive cruise system is just so intuitive. It's like push away to turn it off, pull towards you to turn it on, and then you can control your distance with a physical button. There's no having to go through silly menus like newer cars. It, you know, it just works. It's just easy to use. Absolutely brilliant system. Then visibility, as I mentioned before, these wing mirrors are nice and wide, so you can see in your blind spot very easily. And then of course, engine response, is very very good so the car's out of gear now because we're in efficiency because we're coasting but if i just plant my foot straight to third gear and you are off and that is like worst case scenario if i put this thing using my favorites button into comfort mode it'll sit in a gear and then if i plant my foot it is literally immediate it responds very quickly and the other thing is you know, before I mentioned that the torque is really good and it comes in at 1500 RPM, if I put this in manual, six gear, right? I'm sitting at 52 miles an hour, or let's go from 50, and I just plant my foot. Watch how fast the boost builds. So we're already in 55, 56, it's already 60. That's 65, we've got a Tesla in front of us now. But you get my point. It's an absolutely brilliant engine, this. All right, back into efficiency. And then in terms of handling, coming into corners, if you slam on the brakes pretty hard, you get the front end to really bite. And it feels nice, actually. It's very progressive, very obvious what the car is doing as well. I'm excited to see how this thing handles later. See if Quattro makes a big difference. Right, let's get ourselves onto the motorway now and see what kind of an MPG we manage. stuck in quite a bit of traffic. It's the usual uh, Saturday Heathrow traffic on the M25, but we've still managed 44.4 miles per gallon, which overall is a pretty decent figure, all things considered. And if we did have a good run, you'd be just shy of 50 mpg, which, I mean, you're not really going to do much better than that, are you, in any other car, especially the 1.5 litre engine. I remember this is smoother, it's heavier because we have Quattro, and it's quicker. So, what's not to like? <laughs> anyway, let's get the traction control off, let's use our favourites button to get us into dynamic, and uh, do a bit of fun driving, shall we? Okay, so back in dynamic, so we've got stiffer steering, sharpened throttle response, and a gearbox that goes into S. I'm gonna go for manual though take control myself and I've turned the traction control all the way off because we don't need that we are in a quattro Audi and uh, let's go round again actually just for lols one thing you notice is that when you come off the throttle it actually tightens its line and you can kind of get it to oversteer <laughs> 
Look at that, performance is really good out of this engine. Might not be an S car, but it's not far off. You know, you're pretty close to a VW Golf GTI, really. It's the mid-range torque as well, like if I shift at 5, you get really good acceleration. Even from 3,000 revs. Brilliant engine. In terms of brakes, obviously they're just the standard A3 brakes, but they're still very strong. As you can see by the fact my head went all the way forwards. <laughs> In terms of sound, it's an A3, so it's not going to sound amazing, but... There's kind of like a bit of S3 in there. I reckon if you did a resonator delay, it'd sound pretty decent. Or if you've got the money, you get a proper valve exhaust system. But steering's fairly intuitive. It's overall, a very nice handling car. And you really don't need more performance than that, do you? So I think I like about this dynamic steering rack is quite a few journalists slated it when it came out because they said it was unpredictable, but I find it very predictable in all honesty. Gearbox, super sharp, shifts are on point. It's a brilliant gearbox, this. And Quattro <laughs> obviously sticks pretty well. <laughs> Plant your foot coming out of corners. Oh, it just delivers the performance. Too much performance for my GoPro. <laughs> I just love the way that torque comes in. So let's go six gear, 58 miles an hour. And you just plant your foot and the boost comes in and it's so strong. Like, look at that, all the way up to 70 how fast that gearbox is as well. Very quick. The only thing I wish is that the seat should hold me in a little bit better. But most of the time, I don't know actually, most of the time you kind of want it to not hold you in too much. It's just for this kind of driving you do want it to be a bit more bolstered. But I love the chassis of this thing, because you really can just plant your foot. And it sticks and it goes. It's got all the performance you could ever need. And the steering, I mean, look at that. It's so responsive. Chassis is like, sporty enough. <laughs> you can feel what the car's doing. Just brilliant. Everything's just like working cohesively. Nothing feels really out of place. And do you know what? It's a fun car to drive, actually. You can get it a little bit sideways if you want to. Under throttle, maybe not so much, but you know, coming into corners and hitting the brakes hard. If you drive it like a Porsche, it kind of does the same things because instead of having the engine all the way over the back, it's kind of all the way over the front, which isn't necessarily always a good thing, but it means you can get the rear wheels to kind of lift a little bit, because they're quite light, and you get the car to pivot around the corner. It's lovely. And obviously with the Quattro system, you just plant your foot, come rain or shine, and if you want the car to go, it will. Performs very well, this motor. Lovely stuff. Where it's even better, though, is down a small British B road, especially a bumpy one. So let's take it to one now, and uh, I'll show you what I mean. This is where this A3 is really good. Quattro, plant your foot, and you're off. I mean, look at the way this thing builds speed. For 190 horsepower, it is blooming impressive. And the suspension is just brilliant for a small car. <laughs> Proper jump over there. <laughs> oh, an S3. And the thing is, the S3 is only going to really get away from you on the straights, because even in corners, <laughs> you can properly chuck this thing in. It's, it's a quick car, you know? Okay, can we hit 60 before the corner? Let's go. Quattro, giving us all the traction we need. And there's 60. Look at that. 
hit 60 before some more powerful cars, really. Third gear is very strong. It's a genuinely fast car. <laughs> and do you know what? The suspension round roads like this, I find it actually a bit better than the S3 because it just stays in contact with the road a bit more. Fantastic bit of kit. Sometimes you want suspension to be just a little bit softer. One last time then. For good measure. There was a little DSG fart there. Oh, stuff in the road. Ooh. Everything's flying everywhere. I mean, obviously on a track, this thing isn't going to be that fast, but on roads like this, just brilliant. That three to 5,000 RPM. I mean, you can hit the brakes so hard as well. <laughs> Genuinely fast car. Like, no beating around the bush. This would keep up with pretty much any hot hatch, purely because of that Quattro system. Fantastic bit of kit. So, in conclusion then, do you need to buy an S3? Well, obviously it's a quicker car and it is maybe a little bit more engaging. I'd say this is still like almost just as good though. This is still a fun car to drive and you don't really need any more power than it has. But for me, if you don't have the money to buy an S3 and more importantly, if you don't have the cash to insure an Audi S3, I think this is a absolutely brilliant compromise. Like you're 90% of the way there really, even though it's lacking a bit of power. Still pretty quick, still handles pretty much the same, and you're going to save a lot of money on insurance and on purchasing the car and a little bit on fuel as well. And you still get a really nice car. You know, if you want to remap this thing, you can. It will happily do 240 horsepower with a downloadable map, and uh, it will sound okay with an aftermarket exhaust system as well. What is not to love? Anyway, as always, if you enjoy content like this, please give this video a like and one of subscribers. Not only can you see more content like this, you can, of course, see everything we have for sale, which includes this very rare, actually, like, surprisingly rare Audi A3 2.0-litre Quattro. And it's not only rare because it's the 2.0-litre Quattro, it's rare because it's got a panoramic roof, it's got B&O sound, dual-zone climate control, the virtual cockpit, and adaptive cruise control, which... If you're a fan of newer systems like this, oh, it is a lifesaver on long motorway journeys. It just makes all driving on a motorway, if you're in traffic, so easy. Absolutely worth every penny in my book. Anyway, my name is Tom, and you, as always, have been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.